Well, you know, one of the most uncomfortable things that can happen to us when we're flying, we've all been there, is you're flying along and all of a sudden the autopilot does something you weren't expecting and we ask, what's the airplane doing now? Yet there is one source of information that can really help us. It's the scoreboard. It can save your life. Let's hear and join CJP safety consultant Neil Singer as he gives us some tips and strategies on how to best use the scoreboard. Thanks, Charlie. Several notable citation accidents highlight the importance of correct use of the scoreboard. Yet in my training and check rides, I see far too many pilots either ignoring the information the scoreboard is presenting to them or not fully appreciating what it is showing. Let's look at how the use of the CAMI acronym can help us with this. What's CAMI? After confirming and activating the necessary mode, the pilot in command should monitor via the scoreboard and intervene as necessary if the modes displayed are not the modes that the pilot desires. Too many pilots stop at activate and fail to monitor or intervene before a serious excursion from lateral or vertical flight path occurs. Let's look at a few examples of how proper use of the CAMI acronym can catch and prevent common errors with the flight director and autopilot. Citation 416 Delta Mike, turn right heading 135, maintain 2,000 feet till established, clear for the ILS, runway 15 Charleston. Right heading 135, 2,000 till established, cleared for the ILS 15, 416 Delta Mike. Maybe you've already figured out what I didn't do. This is one of the most common mistakes I see pilots make. You've probably done it yourself at some point. I've been cleared for the approach. I've started the inbound turn, but I forgot to arm the approach mode. So a cue can be as the course starts to come alive, I'm monitoring. Do I see the modes I expect? If I don't, I'm intervening to put them up there. And now I see my localizer and glide slope armed modes and I expect the autopilot to perform as I originally intended it to. Here's another one maybe you've experienced. I'm trying to catch an altitude on a non-precision approach, and in my hurry to stay ahead of the airplane and set the next step down, I'm going to do that a little too soon. That's going to result in an unintentional deviation below the current safe altitude. So we're descending from 2,000 feet down to 1,600 feet. And if I set my next step down altitude before the actual altitude capture has occurred, what's going to happen is the airplane's going to enter altitude. pitch mode. Now, by using the CAMI process, I can monitor and intervene before an unsafe altitude excursion occurs. Citation 416 Delta Mike. Turn left, heading 090, maintain 2,000 feet, traffic 12 o'clock, 3,000 feet. 090, Delta Mike. Since most of our buttons function as toggle switches, accidentally hitting the same button twice in a row will put me in my basic lateral mode or roll mode. The airplane's not turning, I'm not complying with my ATC clearance. This type of failure to monitor and then take intervention when necessary has been cited in several accident reports. Citation 416 Delta Mike, climb maintain 3,000 feet. Climb maintain 3,000, 416 Delta Mike. Altitude. Thinking I've engaged the autopilot when I actually didn't is another common mistake. Again, monitoring after my action and if necessary, taking appropriate interventions can save me from an altitude deviation or worse. Autopilot's engaged and I've confirmed via the scoreboard. On your next flight, pay more attention to what the scoreboard is telling you and make it your SOP to visually and verbally identify the modes and make sure they're the modes you intend.
Thank you, Neil, and a special thank you to Flight Safety Textron Aviation Training. We hope that you enjoyed the What Good Looks Like video series. If you have any comments or suggestions, please email them to safety at citationjetpilots.com. We'll see you next time.